Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is yet another vlog, and uh, I have another series of stacks of Blu-rays, 4Ks, and DVDs to show you, as well as some thoughts to share on some fairly new movie trailers for upcoming movies uh, that are going to come out later this year, and uh, some upcoming 4k and blu-ray releases that uh, caught my eye uh, before I get into showing the titles that I picked up recently I want to give a very special shout out to anyone who has requested a review uh, and to those of you who are still waiting for your request to be fulfilled uh, I apologize for the for the delays I am in the process of getting around to as many as I possibly can. The plan is to get through as many requests as humanly possible this month, and if there are any left over, I will work on them in the following month. Uh, but I really appreciate your patience as well as your support, and uh, I hope the uh, videos when they are uploaded are worth the wait and everything that you want them to be and more. because. Uh, like I said, I, I really do, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate the support and as well as the support from anyone else that has either liked videos on my channel or left a kind word. A lot of it really means the world to me. Now, if it sounds like I'm a little uh, slow, it's because I did get my second COVID vaccine shot, so I apologize in advance when it comes to my energy level. Uh, it's been kind of starting to dip uh, since uh, the past hour or so, but I want to get a, a video uh, out there so uh, a lot of you have something to chew on or something to tide you over until... I post my next review. The plan is to do Army of, of the Dead next, but if that doesn't work out, uh, I I have a backup plan because if this vaccine knocks me out longer than I think, then it's one of those things where I do have a backup plan and the backup plan will be uh, some reviews that I've already previously recorded and have ready to go. Um, but... Uh, yeah, without further uh, blabbing, let's get to the uh, titles. So we're going to start with the DVDs. So we have Fantasy Island, uh, the uh, unrated and theatrical cut. Uh, this is from Blumhouse. Got it for super cheap because uh, this is a, a film that I'm curious about to see how it's going to work, how they're going to take the Fantasy Island TV show and turn it into a horror kind of uh, tale. Uh, this one is Dark Star, the Hyperdrive Edition. I might have already shown this in another video, but just in case I didn't, there we go. Here we have uh, The Wolf of Snow Hollow, uh, which is a fairly recent film. For some reason, this uh, particular DVD cover art uh, does not show up very well on camera. As you can see, like Jim Cummings' his name will be like focused, and then it will be out of focus. It's just a weird... I don't know what the issue is. For some reason, this DVD cover is something that gives my camera a lot of issues. Uh, this looked like an interesting take on a werewolf film and uh, featured Robert Forster in one of his last roles before he passed away and Jim Cummings as the lead. And Yeah, looks like an interesting movie. So Wolf of Snow Hollow. I got a Sushi Girl. Super cheap. It was only a dollar at a pawn shop. Then we have a uh, Swashbuckler, one of the biggest uh, box office bombs of 1976, not 1986. Uh, this film was an infamous flop. It cost like I think eight million dollars at the time, and was a massive bomb. The first of many uh, box office bombs dealing with pirates. Then we have The Program, which is the Lance Armstrong movie. And we have a, another werewolf directed video movie, Blood Moon. And then we have the animated Adams Family, the CGI Adams Family from uh, last year. 
So that's it for the DVDs. Now we have a bunch of Blu-rays. And forgive me, I'm going to get something to drink real quick. Some nice, sweet metal yellow. I can't get metal yellow in the can anywhere locally. It's no longer available. Um, but I can get it through uh, fast food places like Arby's. Wendy's and I think Burger King is another one. Uh, so I know I should probably be drinking more water. I do have water. I've been drinking a lot of water already today. Uh, but um, yeah, so here we have uh, the first Blu-ray. King Kong, the collector's edition from uh, Scream Factory. I'm a big fan of this film. And uh, this is definitely uh, one of my favorite films in terms of a uh, monster movie so king kong it's a nice release has the theatrical cut as well as the uh, tv cut of the film then we have uh, another screen factory release deadly blessing here we have the warner archive collection release of memphis bell Here we have a Live by Night, Ben Affleck film. Here we have a Christopher Nolan movie, Insomnia. This is honestly one of my favorite Christopher Nolan films. I don't think it gets talked about as much as it should when it comes to his filmography. This is a uh, Blu-ray I was sent a while back as a gift, but I wanted to show it because I've picked up the other Karate Kid films recently. Um... This is actually has a really good transfer. Uh, I was surprised by how good that up converted. Then we have this double feature from Mill Creek. It was super cheap for Karate Kid 3 and 4 for the collection. And then speaking of super cheap, I also got uh, the reboot. The Karate Kid with uh, Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan. Here we have the Filmmaker Signature Series release of Wall Street. This is the definitive release of this film to get. If you're a fan of this film... And I am. I'm a huge fan of this movie. Uh, this is the this is the best uh, version of the film you can pick up. Um, this has the best transfer in terms of the picture quality, and uh, yeah, it's it's definitely the one to grab because the earlier release doesn't have nearly as good of a transfer, and uh, this also comes with a a booklet. And uh, this up converts amazing as well in 4K. This look. This transfer looked terrific of converted. So that's Wall Street. Uh, then we have uh, The Conjuring. One of my favorite Haunted House films. I only had it on DVD. So I picked that up. Then we have uh, Troy, the director's cut. For some reason, the theatrical version is not on Blu-ray. Only the director's cut. Hustlers. I wouldn't say it's the best film of 2019, but it's one of the better movies, and it's a film that surprised me. So I'm glad to finally add that to the collection. Uh, we have Gemini Man with Will Smith. Got it because it was pretty cheap. Got a double feature of Dumb and Dumber, The Unrated Cut, and The Mask. Now, Dumb and Dumber, The Unrated Cut is not nearly as good as the theatrical version. I don't know why that is the only version you can get on Blu-ray, uh, but I mainly got it for The Mask, because I'm a fan of The Mask, and I only had it on DVD. Then we have a film called Molly's Game, which looked interesting. Uh, we have uh, 21 Bridges, starring Chadwick Boseman, one of the last films he did before... Uh, he passed away. Then we have a fairly recent horror film, Escape Room. There's a sequel coming out pretty soon. Uh, I think it comes out in the next couple months or something like that. I always thought this looked interesting, so decided to pick it up. Here we have the six movie collection of Paranormal Activity. Only got it because it was $5 at a pawn shop. Good deal. Would make for some fun... Uh, videos too so paranormal activity series we have the quick and the dead sam raimi western 
We have uh, Eagle Eye, which is honestly one of my favorite science fiction thrillers from the 2000s. This film is really underrated, if you ask me. Then we have The Edge with Anthony Hopkins and Alec Baldwin. I didn't even know this had a Blu-ray. I, I thought it was only on DVD. Then we have Clue, the movie. I'm going to clue you in on something. If you're a fan of this film and you haven't upgraded yet because it's kind of a bare bones Blu-ray, I recommend you upgrade as soon as possible because this is a sparkling stellar transfer. This looks amazing. This is a great transfer. Massive upgrade over the DVD. Then we have Clash of the Titans, the original from 1981. And... Dracula Untold. And then we have a uh, couple films here starring Bruce Willis. Red. I actually really liked this film last time I saw it. I only had it on DVD. And then we have Red 2. Which I actually haven't seen yet. And then we have the Muppets 6 movie collection. Big Muppets fan. Have been ever since I was a kid. This is a really good deal on Amazon. Uh, we It has the Muppets, the reboot. It also has the Muppet movie. You've got uh, the Great Muppet Caper, Muppet Treasure Island, Muppet Christmas Carol. And then you've got the Muppets Most Wanted. So it doesn't have Muppets from Space because that's a different uh, rights holder than Disney. And it doesn't have uh, Muppets Take Manhattan. But thanks to a friend of mine... Uh, Jonathan, I was sent Muppet Takes Manhattan, and I picked up uh, Muppets from Space a while back already on my own. So now I have a complete Muppet movie collection, and one of these days I would really like to uh, watch those again and share my thoughts on those movies. So uh, that's the Muppet movies, and that's it for the Blu-rays. Now we're going to get to 4K releases. So we're, we will start out with Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, this is a fairly new release. In fact, this is a release I think that just came out a couple days ago. Uh, I got this at a pawn shop for pretty cheap. And I got this and a bunch of other 4Ks at a pawn shop at the same pawn shop. And the lady behind the counter actually gave me a discount. I didn't even ask for it. She was just like, I'll just take a couple bucks off the total. And so it was really nice. And I'm definitely going to keep an eye on that place because the prices were really affordable for 4Ks. So uh, Smoking the Bandit. Eastbound down, loaded up and trucking. We're going to do what they say can't be done. we got a long way to go and a short time to get there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I really enjoy that movie. It's the only uh, Smoking the Bandit film that really needs a 4K release. The sequel doesn't need one and definitely uh, part three. That definitely does not need a 4K release. Speed of 4K, got more. Tenet. Then we have The Karate Kid, the 35th anniversary release. That is Logan. This is actually one I got from Facebook Marketplace. It didn't, didn't have the Blu-ray or the Nor 4K disc, but it only cost me like five bucks. It's a crazy good deal. And I already had the regular Blu-ray of Logan Noir from a, uh, from a Logan Blu-ray that was sent to me by a friend of mine. I think Jonathan sent me that a while back. So, yeah, I got it in 4K now. Paid, like, half the price. Actually, less than half the price that it's going for online. And I got this off Amazon Warehouse, uh, the Lego movie in 4K. Uh, I know you're like, wait a second, it's got a blue Blu-ray case? This is the way it came in the mail. And you know what? The blue actually fits Lego pretty well. But uh, I'm a completionist, so in the future, I actually would like to get a, a 4K case and just replace this. Because it just sticks out like a sore thumb. But I really enjoyed this film, and it looks, it looks absolutely stupendous in 4K. It looks really good. And speaking of Lego Movie... We have uh, the second part, which I actually haven't had a chance to see yet. 
So Lego Movie, second part. Another one that I got for super cheap. And then all of these are ones that I will... No, it's a mix of things from the pawn shop and also from uh, a certain uh, website called Blu-raysforeveryone.com. So we have Ready Player One. I want to give this another shot, and it was pretty cheap. I I'm trying to get a bunch of 4K uh, Blu-rays for my collection, and I think that one will look really good. We have Fifth Element. I know there was a recent release from Studio Canal. That apparently is 10 times better according to a lot of people. I thought this looked great. I'm not going to complain. Uh, then we have uh, the two Fantastic Beasts films. I've never seen these. And it only cost me like $7.50 each for uh, each of these 4K releases. So it was a good deal. And then we have Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, the, the first film. Only cost me 9 bucks at the pawn shop. Great deal. And I love this film. This is my favorite Beverly Hills Cop movie. And uh, one of my favorite 80s comedies or, and action comedies. I, I love this film. So it was great to have that in 4K finally. And then we have Knives Out. I was curious about this one because the cast and the concept. So we have Knives Out. And then to round it up, we have the... Big gun that is the last action hero steel book. This is gorgeous. It looks even more awesome in person. Just a gorgeous steel book. Uh, always love that cover art. So we've got Arnold breaking out of the screen, and uh, it's a really nice 4K set. And uh, the film looks amazing. And uh, for those of you who are fans of Last Action Hero and would like to check it out digitally, copy that code. Give it a shot. Should work. I didn't use it. So, can you see it? Can you see it good enough? Screenshot it. Write it down. Whoever gets to it first, it's yours. It's your ticket for a digital copy of Last Action Hero. So anyway, uh, yeah. 4K release, The Last Action Hero in Steelbook form in terms of its case. And uh, that's it for uh, the movies. Now we get to some movie trailers. Um, might as well start with Venom, Let There Be Carnage. God. Uh, Carnage is not something that's going to work in PG-13. And this trailer was a prime example of that. And also what's not going to work is the cringe humor. I mean, God, the humor was cringe enough in the first movie. It looks like they're just repeating the same cringy crap as uh, the first Venom. The action sequences, whatever was there in the screen, didn't really get my blood pumping. The uh, CGI looked like shit. Uh, yeah, uh, Carnage is an understatement. Uh, it's, it's really a shame. Carnage is one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. Uh, Woody Harrelson is not really a bad casting choice, but, um, uh, it's just embarrassing what they're doing to Venom with this series of films. It's just fucking embarrassing to the millionth degree. Um, the next one, uh, Snake Eyes. There's a Snake Eyes movie coming out. A prequel film. I don't give a shit. The, the trailer did nothing for me. This movie is just coming out of nowhere. Like just straight out of left field. And it looks like a direct video movie to me. It does not look like a theatrical film by any means. And the guy who's playing the lead. Looks like he has zero charisma. Uh, and I thought Snake Eyes didn't talk. Oh wait. That's the whole point. Snake Eyes is going to have something happen, and then he's not going to talk anymore. Whatever. Useless origin story. Do not give a shit. Um, there's a film coming out on Netflix called The Ice Road. It looks like fun. It's Ice Road Truckers, the movie. You got Liam Neeson and uh, Lawrence Fishburne, and they play these truck drivers who get a team together to try to rescue some miners who were trapped, and uh, they have to go all along the ice roads, to try to get to them. And then there's this other stuff going on with a double cross and so on and so forth. 
Uh, that one looks promising. It looks like fun. Some of the CGI is a little dodgy, but a good amount of the film, from what I've seen in the trailer, looks like it's taking place on the ice road. And that looked absolutely uh, stellar in terms of uh, the cinematography and like I had some nice stunt work. So, yeah, it's a different idea. I, I mean, I never really have heard of an ice road movie. So uh, that's that's something I'm definitely going to keep an eye on. I'm more excited about that than I am the Eternals. What a piece of shit that trailer was. That film looked like a completely dull, forgettable waste. Like, like the trailer alone did nothing to make me remotely interested in this film about characters I don't I know two shits about. It, it's like the complete opposite of Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy featured characters I didn't know that much about. And then the trailer, the teaser came out and I was sold immediately. This looks flat, lifeless. It's a fucking corpse. Um, the director may have won best picture for her film Nomadland, but that doesn't mean that she's a great visual technician when it comes to her directing there is not a single shot in this film that is even really that impressive. Uh, the action, there really isn't any. And it sucked, whatever was there. And the humor was a massive miss for me as well. Uh, and the actors seemed like they were bored. The plot, I don't even know what the plot is. Some bullshit about the Eternals didn't get involved until now. When they could have before, but they didn't because reasons. <laughs> it's one of those things like, oh, we sat on our hands and stuck, stuck our thumbs up our asses for centuries. But now, now we're going to do something. Now we're going to try to help humanity. Could have helped humanity during the Chitari War. Could have helped humanity during the fucking mass extinction event uh, with Thanos. Could have helped humanity when Ultron was trying to drop an entire fucking city on on uh, the planet. But no, 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 uh, no, uh, we we uh, we were not ready. It wasn't the time for us yet. Bullshit. Lazy. And it, it, it doesn't even look like a theatrical film. Honestly, I think this is going to tank. I think this is going to be the first massive box office bomb for Marvel. I don't know of barely anyone that is really that excited or that pumped for the Eternals. I don't give a shit. The trailer gave me no reason to give a shit. And I also think the Marvel Cinematic Universe is on its last legs because of what happened with the massive buildup to the Infinity War storyline. And once that was over, what have you got left? What do you really have left? And without Iron Man or Captain America, the remaining Avengers are not strong enough to carry franchises. Spider-Man could have done it, but they fucked the character up and made him into Iron Man 2.0. So it's not like he's going to carry anything. And I like Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness might be interesting, but I think it might be a convoluted fucking mess of Easter eggs and shit. Seems like all everything that I'm hearing about it, it's like, oh, we've got uh, so and so from this movie who's gonna be returning, and then we're gonna have this, and we're gonna have that, and we're gonna have this, and it just looks like complete nonsense. I don't know, like what what are we gonna have in terms of a plot? Are we just gonna have Easter eggs every which way but loose? Is that all that that film's gonna be? But regardless, it's still gonna be better than the Eternals. Now, a film that did uh, really uh, entice me from the trailers, Last Night in Soho. That completely took me by surprise. I knew nothing about this movie till the trailer dropped, and Edgar Wright is an amazing talent, and the film looked really interesting. The trailer didn't give that much away. Uh, visually, it looks stunning, and I really like the idea behind it. It's a combination of a mystery and a time travel film mixed with a slasher or a horror film. A really intriguing blend of different genres. Uh, that one is definitely one that I'm going to uh, look forward to seeing. Uh, Escape Room Tournament of Champions. 
I haven't seen the first escape room, but it looks like it might be potentially interesting. Might be kind of a fun movie. Uh, the Tomorrow War. I like Chris Pratt. I really do. But this film looked generic. It looked painfully generic to me. Not, nothing about it really excited me that much other than the fact that Chris Pratt was in it. The idea of people being drafted into a future war is, is different. And I kind of like that idea. But the trailer did nothing to get me excited for it. The action looked very pedestrian and lackluster. And that is really worrisome. So, yeah, um, definitely not in a rush to go see that. False Positive, another A24 horror film. The main selling point is you have one of the actors from Broad City, the Comedy Central show, that I think it's Alana Glazer. I think that's who it is. And I like her as an actress. And I'm curious to see how she's going to pull it off in terms of playing against type and being in a horror movie. That being said... The plot of that film is as generic and as predictable and been there, done that as you can possibly get. It's Rosemary's Baby meets The Unborn meets a bunch of Slew uh, and a whole bunch of other fucking movies. It's Alive, you name it. And I don't really think there's anything you can really do with a evil killer uh, mutant or devil baby storyline that hasn't been done before. So, that being said, uh, there's a film called Werewolves Within, though, that looks like it might be promising. There's not a lot of new things you can do with the werewolf genre, but this looks like a somewhat uh, fresh idea with uh, a murder mystery that has the vibe of like a Coen Brothers movie, but then there's a werewolf. So, that one looks like it might be worth a watch. Still don't give a shit about Jungle Cruise, no matter how many trailers there are for it. Old, the idea is, it has potential of like this beach that causes people to age or de-age. But knowing M. Night Shyamalan and Ding Dong is going to be some kind of stupid bullshit twist. And I, I don't know, I, I'm not excited for it. I don't think this idea is really strong enough either for a future film. It seems like something that would work the best in an anthology, like like a 20, 30 minute episode of an anthology, not as a feature film. So I don't know about that working at, uh, for uh, a extended amount of running time. So that's my thoughts on uh, those trailers. When it comes to some movie news, Predator 5, what the fuck is that shit? Uh, it's going to star this chick who I think she was in the FX show Legion and she looks like she couldn't uh, kick a fly's ass but she's going to be the lead and there's some bullshit that I've been hearing in terms of a rumor that is going to be dealing with a Native American uh, battling gender norms and the Predator and I'm like Disney Go fuck yourself with a mousetrap up your fucking ass. So sick and tired of this bullshit of this politically correct shoehorned SJW shit that's just shoved down your fucking throat. It's not as progressive as you think it is, especially when you got to elevate these strong female characters on pedestals that are made out of bullshit. And, and it sounds like a stupid idea for a Predator movie. Oh, it's a Predator film that's going to be politicized and deal with this shit about gender norms and and going to have this chick who looks like she couldn't fucking hurt a goddamn fly fighting the Predator. It's like, what is this garbage? What has this franchise become? Why do we need another Predator movie anyway? I, you would think the Predator franchise would be foobarred after the Predator. I think it is. I said that in the rant. They fucked the Predator. They killed the fucking Predator. They ripped its head off and fucked the hole. So I don't think that there's anything left. But here comes Disney doing another one and doing this same shitty song and dance that I'm so sick and fucking tired of with the 
female lead and gender politics and identity politics. Keep your fucking politics out of my goddamn entertainment. Keep your politics where they belong on the fucking podium. Or on C-SPAN. Why does every goddamn film have to be politicized nowadays? Why does every franchise have to be deconstructed? Why does every franchise have to have this political fucking cancer injected into it? Because that's a great way to put it. Because what happens when a franchise becomes political? The franchise fucking dies. It doesn't make it more progressive. It doesn't make it better. It makes it worse. Sometimes it's better just to, you know, keep it simple. Stay within the core of the franchise. You want to do another Predator movie? Do one in the fucking snow with a former military guy or uh, a spec ops or... You could even have it be a female lead and I would actually have no problem with that. If they weren't trying to do this shit about gender norms and all that other crap. There's enough movies that have already done that. We don't need Predator 5 to break new ground in that regard. Because there's really no new ground for you to break in. Whatever happened to characters like Ellen Ripley or uh, Sarah Connor who were strong female characters, but they weren't like Captain Marvel, who were propped up artificially with all this other shit that made men look like they're just a bunch of assholes or took the time to put the character on a pedestal above everybody else. That never fucking happened in those movies. With Sarah Connor and Ellen Ripley... They were strong characters, first and foremost. They didn't need to have a neon sign that said, I'm a woman, and I'm also strong, and I'm really strong, and I'm independent. They didn't fucking need that. They were strong characters that stood out on their own. And to me, that's better anyway. That's a more progressive thing to do, is to have your female character stand on their own two feet. And hold their own against the male actors or the male characters in the film. Another good example of that is uh, the character played by uh, Rita. I think her name is Rita, played by Emily Blunt in uh, Edge of Tomorrow. The full metal bitch. Whatever happened to characters like that? Why do we have to have this bullshit where everything is now politicized and we have to really make it a key focus that this female character is given every opportunity to have this artificial platform that's created by the screenwriters and makes them appear to be stronger than they really are because without that fucking platform they fall flat on their fucking ass why the hell do we need that why can't they just stand on their own without a goddamn platform? Like all these other fucking strong female characters in other franchises. What about Halle Berry's character in John Wick 3? Didn't need any of that shit. Didn't need her to be artificially propped up. <sighs> Sorry, I mean, I, I would be here all day if I decided to go on that tangent for any longer but yeah predator 5 i know it's a rumor but judging by history it's probably pretty close to reality because when the predators original script leaked and the ideas about the predator leaked they turned out to be 100 percent true and accurate for the most part i know he's disney i'm not i'm not fucking surprised that now the predator 5 is going to be injected with fucking identity politics and uh, breaking gender norms and that other fucking shit. So, yeah, I don't know really what else to say about Predator 5. I know there's going to be a Scream 5. We don't need another one. It's not necessary. Of course, you have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake for what feels like the 50th goddamn time. 
uh, which is also not necessary. Neither is another Hellraiser movie. Neither is another Nightmare on Elm Street. I, I don't need. I'm not. I'm not excited for Halloween Kills because I didn't like Halloween 2018. So it's one of those things where I like these franchises and I like these characters, but we don't need another one. The only one I maybe might be interested in it in is another Friday the Thirteenth, but it's stuck in legal limbo, so that's not going to happen anytime soon. So. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about uh, movie news in terms of upcoming stuff. Oh, I know Amazon uh, just bought MGM. We'll see how that goes. I heard Paramount's in trouble. Parapricks are in trouble uh, with uh, tax evasion. That's uh, insane. We'll see how that goes. Um, now they actually have a legitimate uh, reason to be... Well, you know, they had a legitimate reason to be called pair of pricks before, but like now, like even more so, <laughs> the tax evasion. Where did they get their advice from Wesley Snipes? Um, the only other thing I could think of is talking about some upcoming uh, Blu-ray and 4K releases. One I am absolute, absolutely pumped for. I mean, I'm so pumped for it, I couldn't even say the word absolutely correctly. Arrow Video's release of Dune in 4K, David Lynch's Dune restored in 4K high definition with a deluxe box set with a ton of, of features, a feature length making of documentary that I'm really psyched and pumped to watch, uh, a bunch of other supplemental material. Uh, honestly, as a huge fan of that film, that has the potential to be the release of the year for me because I, I, I'm such a massive fan of Dune, uh, warts and all. So I'm super pumped for that. I already pre I already pre-ordered it. It's already locked in. Um, speaking of pre-orders, I did pre-order the Indiana Jones uh, collection 4K. It's going to be coming out, I think, like in eight days. It's coming out pretty soon. Uh, really pumped for that as well. Uh, speaking of 4K, Kino Lorber is going to be doing a 4K release of Hard Target. I am really pumped for that. I'm a big fan of that film, and I didn't have it on Blu-ray at all. So, uh, yeah, it's a bummer that it's not the fully uncut version, the work print, but I, I wasn't expecting that to happen because I knew that Universal wasn't going to spend the money to restore it. I knew that Kino Lorber didn't have the money to restore it. So I, I knew that there was just going to be the extended version that was previously released already on Blu-ray. That being said, it's going to be a 4K remaster, and Kino Lorber does a good job with that kind of stuff, so I'm, I'm pretty pumped about it regardless. Um, and it's definitely one that I'm going to pick up. In terms of other releases, uh, Screen Factory is releasing The Borrower, a, a very underrated fairly unknown science fiction horror film from the director of Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, John McNaughton, uh, featuring, uh, I think, Ray Dong Chong is in it, and it deals with this alien that comes to Earth and it borrows heads. Uh, it's a much better version of X-Files, I want to believe. <laughs> it really is. Uh, I'm glad that's getting a release finally. Uh, that's one I'm definitely going to pick up in the future. Vinegar Syndrome did release their most uh, recent titles during their halfway to Black Friday sale. I actually, for the first time, didn't take part in that sale. First off, I didn't really have the money to do it this time around. But also, things just didn't really scream must-buy for me. Scanner Cop 1 and 2 would be fun to get, but not at the price tag, which is, I think, it's like 60 fuck it, it was it, it's It's expensive. It was like 50 or 60 bucks. It was just insane. For only two movies. I know they're in 4K and they come with a regular Blu-ray. But still. Uh, that's a bit much. Silver String. Or, or actually it's Six String Samurai. Not Silver String. I don't know. That's something else probably. Uh, Six String Samurai. Looked like it might be an interesting fun B movie. But not for like $45, $50. I'm just not going to spend that much on it. And I don't give a fuck about Surf 2. Uh, and Alien from L.A., really? That film is lame as hell. I'm not paying $28 for that either. And I heard all this hype about Champagne and Bullets 
aka Get Even, and I saw the trailer, and I almost cringed to death. What what is so great about that? Oh, it's 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 a great film because it's so bad. One of those movies that's enjoyed ironically by a lot of people, and some of those can work. But I didn't laugh. I didn't find it any of it enjoyable. I just thought it was bad acting and bad action. And it just looked like a bad fucking film. Um, maybe if I'm watching it with a group of friends and we're fucking wasted, we think it's the greatest, most hilarious thing ever. But if you're just watching it by yourself and you're not under any kind of influence, I don't know how that film would actually be considered to be that enjoyable. From what I had seen. So yeah, I'm not looking forward to a lot of the, that when it comes to their upcoming slate of movies. Uh, I know uh, Vestron Collector Series just announced that they're going to be releasing The Wraith. It's an alright movie. It's okay at best. It's disappointing. I'll pick it up though if it's $7.50 like the other releases were and Shivers and, and uh, Little Monsters that show up in my local Walmart for that cheap. I'm, I'm all over that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to talk about in terms of an upcoming DVD or Blu-ray. No, I think I'd mainly... Oh, yeah, The Hitcher. Second Sight is going to be releasing The Hitcher. Uh, I'm definitely going to buy that one. Second Sight did one of the best releases last year with uh, the 4K limited box set of Dawn of the Dead. They did an amazing job with Flight of the Navigator and the Changeling. Uh, I think it's a great company to do The Hitcher. Yes, it sucks that it might be region locked, but that might be one of those things where they just couldn't get around it. Like maybe there's some rights issues with the U.S. version of The Hitcher in terms of U.S. distribution. So the only way you can really get a Blu-ray of The Hitcher is overseas. Maybe that's why the only other re release we had was the media book from Germany. But uh, yeah, uh, it, it's... It's unfortunate this is probably going to be region locked, but I, I'm region free and I'm all over that. I uh, can't wait. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. That's all I got for this uh, vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, see you later. See ya.